So please excuse for terrible background as I'm currently in the process of moving. But on another great subject of news, I met Pete Davidson and Colin Baker. Oh my gideont! So it, um, it's been a while since I've made a video on my channel. It's been a long time, I know. Very questionable amount of time. Crazy. But today I thought I'd make a bit of a comeback in this video and talk about my favourite patch of trash and seasons all in order. So rank them from the worst to the best. In a way, there's no worse patch of trash and seasons to go on because he's my favourite doctor. I love his seasons, but I prefer others to some. So, without further ado, let's get into this video because I want to talk about this so bad. So how this list is going to go down is I'm going to start from number three with the certain series as Pat Triton only had three seasons. I am not going to be counting the three Doctors, the five Doctors and the two Doctors because honestly they're different seasons in themselves and they're more their other previous Doctors seasons. So it doesn't really count in this. It's only going to be Patrick Triton's main you know, era as the Doctor. So without further ado, let's start out with number three for my third favourite. Number three on my list is... Series 6. Now, a brief bit of history of Series 6 before we get into this. It was Pat Triton's final series as the Doctor, and it was the series where he had Zoe Harriet. Um, as his companion with Jamie McCrimmon continuing another season after he came on in series 4. Now the reason I've put this at number 3 on my list is because the stories aren't as good in my opinion. I still think this has some great stories. The Invasion is a classic. The War Games is an epic 10 part story. And I even really like the Space Pirates even though what other people say. I've even made a video on that so if you really want to see that it's going to be in the description below. It's also one of the less missing seasons for Patrick Triton's Doctor. Which is absolutely fantastic because you can watch more of his stuff and really get to know his Doctor throughout series 6 unlike series 4. But with series 6, what I find is the stories aren't as memorable. When you have stories like the Dominators and the Crotons, it can sort of drag the story down. I understand with the Crotons, they were trying to make a new massive monster, such as, you know, Big River Daleks themselves, because that was the actual main idea for the Crotons, but unfortunately, it never really hit off. But believe it or not, Zoe, Jamie, and the Second Doctor are my all time favourite TARDIS crew, just because you have the Doctor, you have the clever, charming, brave Jamie, and you have the smart Zoe, who I love a lot. The, literally, this TARDIS trio is probably my favourite of all time, because we're just so great together, and we have that brilliant chemistry, and I'm so glad Big Finish has literally brought these characters back together um, from Fraser Hines and Wendy Padbury. Now, the stories that really stand out in this season have to be the Mind Robber, the Invasion, and the War Games, and the Seeds of Death. And that is my own opinion. If you love the Dominators, the Crotons, and I'm glad you've enjoyment, I think they're good stories, especially the Crotons. I really enjoy that one as I've read the Tiger book and it's a really good read. Um, but unfortunately, stuff like the Dominators isn't really the best part to try to check out. So honestly, that's a bit of a letdown. And another fun fact for you, the writer who actually did the Dominators was never able to write for the BBC again because of that story. I know, but honestly, Series 6 is my number 3 spot, and number 2 we have. Now, Series 4 actually depends on these right here. Before I start talking about the series, I'd like to say I'm not going to put William Hartnell episodes in this, as when I do my own William Hartnell list for this series of videos, then he'll be counted, but unfortunately the Smugglers and the Tenth Planet do not count. We are going to be continuing from the power of the Daleks. So, why is this at number 2, Patch Tratting's first ever outing as the Doctor? Well, for starters, the companion crew in this is Ben and Polly, and Jamie isn't really introduced until the second episode for Highlanders. But what can I say, I personally think it's such a great series of Doctor Who. It's got so many base on siege stories, many creepy ones, and it's also the series to bring the Cybermen back, literally. Um, in the 10th Planet, again, Series 4, they were first ever introduced and they were proven so popular, they brought them back to memory base in a fantastic bring back, which I personally love. And it's personally Hannah's and my favourite Siren story of all time, because it's so creepy and great. 
Some highlights of this season have to be the Power of the Daleks, one of the greatest Dalek stories of all time, the Evil of the Daleks, sadly missing, but the recon still holds it and gives it justice as it's just utterly brilliant. The fact that the Daleks were trying to help humankind factors. If you've not seen Evil of the Daleks, check it out. And probably other stories, such as my personal opinion right here. The Mac Terror, a really fun story, like a holiday style camp with killer crabs. And apart from that, the Highlanders. For Highlanders, there's also a first appearance of Jamie McCrimmon, as I mentioned, the longest running male companion and companion of all time in Doctor Who, as he was with the Doctor throughout all his seasons from season 4 to 6. So he's probably the ultimate male companion and companion of all time in Doctor Who, and my personal favourite. But where this series really kicks off and has a great start, great episodes, there's one episode that really does let it down. The Underwater Menace. Now, the actual episode was found in 2011 for episode 3, and we were told we were going to get an actual DVD release of the story, and we had to wait a while. But we got one in 2014, correct me if I'm wrong, and when we got this release, fans were so excited to get another DVD release of Classic Who, another episode found. How were they going to do it? Was it going to be animated? Was it going to be found? Were we going to have an amazing recon from Loose Cannon? No, we got a really shocking, you know, loose, you know, reconstruction with not even a title sequence. Yeah. Putting the DVD release aside, The Underwater Menace wasn't really the most popular story to be found, and at Fall on Steve, there were all the stories people wanted, such as Evil of the Daleks. Through that season, as it was a big season finale, it introduced Victoria. Um, so when we got this, it was the, literally, it's the early surviving Patch Triathlon episode found episode two is. Yeah, and we only have a clip of the last two minutes from episode one because it wasn't shown, it was banned in Australia. So maybe episodes being banned is a good eye, you know, a good thing for this. But at Fall on Steam, my personal opinion, I really like your underwater menace. It's a very cheesy, campy story, over the top performances, and it just deals with the whole story of Atlantis in the earliest way. And in the funnest way possible, in a 60s Batman kind of way, even the bu booklet in the book actually says that. Great opener, Patrick Triton was seriously fresh, he was finding his way, and when he got to the moon base, we knew what his Doctor was going to be like. He's got some of the best episodes in the show, and 60s air, well, of all time, I may say. It's the actual introduction to one of the best companions, and the series for the most underrated companions, Ben and Polly. So... You know my actual number one season by now. You must. We have three patched thousand seasons. We've had series six, number three. And for number two, we've had series four. So, number one, my favourite Patrick Trasson season is... Now, the episode series five actually relies on are These ones right here. Now, why is series five my ultimate favourite series? Well, let's go through the show. The, the series opener, we have the Tomb of Cybermen. Well, back in the day, it was regarded as the most missing and the most exciting Cyberman story of all time. And when it was found in the 90s, people actually agreed. And now we have it on a DVD release. Well, what can I say? It's pretty great. One of the best Cyberman stories of all time. This series also has an introduction to the Ice Warriors. Not the greatest story in the season, as they have a better episode in the season after series 6, but still an introduction and a quite a decent episode in itself. But also we've got some fantastic, brilliant episodes, such as um, Fury from the Deep, which is like I said, unfortunately all missing, which will deal with a lot of Patrick Tratton's era, but literally one of his best, I adore that episode a bit. We have the Webby Fear, one of the greatest episodes of all time, that was found Thank God, but unfortunately episode 3 is still missing. And we have the enemy of the world. Until it was found, it was considered not a good story because it's a very visual story. Now we have it back in the archives. It's great, people love it, and I love it. I can rewatch that story so many times and I can say I love it even more just because of Patrick Tratton's work and how good he was in that episode. It's even getting its own special edition release. 
that's how good any movie of the world is, with some great special features. So you know, I'm definitely pre-ordering that. But it's also got some very underrated episodes, such as The Wheel in Space, in my opinion, is a very underrated gem and a half. And The Bonimal Snowman is the first appearance of a Yeti. Again, which I personally love, because episode 2 is far as of the Bonimal Snowman, so I actually bought the audio CD years ago, um, when it was, wasn't as rare as it is now, for like £6. I brought it, I listened to it, I watched a recon, and I loved it. The actual land work and film locations episode 2 you can really see, which I love, and I just love the it in general, because... Unlike their upgrade in the Web of Fear, they're still very frightening, yet you want to hug them. That's a very weird comparison for a Doctor Who monster. I even got this old issue of Doctor Who magazine of a private collector online just because I had a picture of the Yeti in the front cover. That's how much I love the Yeti. And that series also introduced us to the character of Professor Travis, who's a, again like a serious regular in a way for series 5. And while on the subject of series regulars, Nicholas Courtney as the Brigadier makes an appearance for his first time in the Web of Fear. Unlike the Dark Master Plan, he was playing Brett, Sail Kingdom's brother, but in this, he plays the Brigadier, but not Lethbridge Stewart, Colonel. He plays Colonel Brigadier, Lethbridge Stewart. Fantastic piece, I love it. Unfortunately, the episode where he first comes in is missing, but let's hope it's found or animated at least one day. So, a highlight for Series 5 has to be, in my opinion, a majority of the episodes. Unlike some not as good ones, the Ice Warriors, in my personal opinion, if you love that story, I'm glad you can find enjoyment from it. Unfortunately, it's a bit slow paced to my liking and not enough happens, but it still is a very good story. But when you have stories like Fury from the Deep, uh, The Enemy of the World, The Web of Fear, you know, you've got itself a fantastic series and when they mostly found all of them it makes it even better so that's why series 5 is probably my favorite Patrick Triton and maybe series of all time in the entirety of classic who and new who history so guys thank you so much for watching this video and all things Doctor Who I do apologize for my absence it's been a very hard time because unfortunately the iPad crashing not working as much it's hard to make videos but I thought I'd make this at as it's like a passion project I've always wanted to make. But before I go, I'd like to ask what are your favourite patch of trout in the seasons? So out of the ones I named in this video, if you're not entirely sure, go back in it and you'll find out completely. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See ya.